Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Grady and Mrs. Ovar and we're going to be teaching you how to use the quadratic formula to solve quadratic equations. So first of all, when we work with the quadratic formula, we're going to have to make sure our um, quadratic equation is in descending order. So remember, ax squared plus bx plus the constant and we set it equal to zero. Now before we even jump into this, I do want to say that we typically use the quadratic formula when the function is not factorable. It works for all quadratics, but we typically use it when the function is not factorable. Remember that the value, the coefficient of the x squared is a, the coefficient of the x term is b, and our constant is c. So this is our quadratic formula, and you need to memorize this. So we say x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And notice that it's all divided by 2 times a. So let's jump in. Best way to learn this is to do it. So first of all, if we look at example number 1, we have x squared plus 3x minus 5 equals 0. Let's write out what our variables will be. So first of all, a is 1, b is the coefficient of the linear term, so it's 3, and c is negative 5. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to substitute these values into the quadratic formula. So x equals the opposite of b, so the opposite of, negative, uh, the opposite of 3, so negative 3, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 3 squared, minus 4 times the a value of 1 times the c value of negative 5. And that's all divided by 2 times the a value, which in this case is 1. Now we need to clean this up. So, We'll take the opposite of 3, or negative 3, plus or minus, and now let's look at what we have underneath. 3 squared is 9. Negative 4 times 1 times negative 5 actually gives us plus 20. You have to be really careful with your signs here. We have, notice, a negative, or subtraction, and a negative. That becomes a positive under the radical. And then it's all divided by 2. Only a little bit more to do here. Negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 29 all divided by 2. Now, you have to ask yourself, can I do anything to the value under the radical? Can I simplify the square root of 29? You can't. So this is your exact set of answers. And notice that you have two answers. We have, and I'm going to write them separately, negative 3 plus the square root of 29 divided by 2, and x equals negative 3 minus the square root of 29 divided by 2. So what we have here are two real roots. Now, if you wanted to see what those were approximately, you would put them in your calculator and you could get the approximate values. I didn't record it. You did, though. It was there. That's what I was... Where did it go? I don't know. Okay, so we didn't think we were recording, but we were. So we're just going to continue right from there. I do want you to see that if you put this in your calculator, you would get approximately 1.2 for this number, and you would get approximately negative 4.2 for this value. So if we were graphing this, remember when we were... Um, talking earlier about the quadratics, about the parabolas, and we would say, oh, it fell somewhere between 1 and 2. Well, now we can actually know the exact value. And we would say, oh, it fell somewhere between negative 5 and negative 4. Well, this is actually the exact value. So this function would look something like this. It's not a very good parabola, but it would look something like that. Okay? Now make sure you can actually do this in your calculator.
Okay, make sure you get the right value. I'm going to pass it off to Mrs. O'Rourke, and she's going to help you with the second one. Here you go. Hello, everyone. All right, so I have example two. And if you notice this one, it's just slightly different than example one because we don't have all the terms on the same side. So make sure you get all of your terms on the same side before you try to set up the quadratic formula because your answer will not be correct because the signs are different when they're on the other side. So I'm going to move everything over. So I have x squared minus 4x and then plus 13 equals 0. Make sure you have that equals 0. And again, like Ms. Graney said, in descending order for your terms. Otherwise, you'll have your a, b, and c in the wrong place. Okay, so just mentioning this part again. a is 1, b is negative 4. You associate any signs there with the number. And then c is going to be our positive 13. So looking back at our quadratic formula here, remember, x equals the opposite of b. So whatever sign you have here, you're going to put the opposite. So negative of the negative 4 gives us positive 4 plus or minus the square root of that negative 4 squared minus 4 times 1, which was our a, times c, which was 13. And again, that's all divided by. Make sure you put that under the whole thing, not just the square root part. 2 times 1, because again, our a was 1. All right, so we simplify. So we have 4 plus or minus. Remember, anything squared here is going to give us a positive. So this is positive 16 minus 4 times 13, um, which is, what is that, 52? Okay, all divided by 2. 16 minus 52 gives us negative 36 inside that square root. Hopefully that's setting off some alarms in your head there. What's going to be, what's going to happen here with that? That's right, we're going to get some complex answers, right? We're taking the square root of a negative. This one thankfully turns out nicely, right? We know the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of the negative, remember, gave us the i. So don't forget about the i. And everything else was the same. All right, we can reduce this just a little bit more because the 4, the 6, and the 2 can all be divided by the same thing. Remember, you can only reduce if you can do it to all three parts here. So I'm going to do that, divide everything by 2, and get 2 oops, plus or minus 3i. It's a weird 2. Okay, so we have two complex answers here. So just like Ms. Graney wrote out, x is 2 plus 3i, and it is 2 minus 3i. We have two roots because we had an x squared. In terms of a graph, this would be one where we don't see it crossing through the x-axis, all right? it would look, it was a positive x squared, right? Yes, it would look something like this. It's, it's up here somewhere, okay? Pro passing through 13, right? That was our y-intercept, but it's never going to cross the x-axis, okay? Hope that makes sense. Let's go to the next page. If you turn over to, it should be page 24 in your packet. There's a couple here that we're going to try. Let's do this first one together, and then I'm going to have you try some on your own. So first thing, get everything on that same side, just like we did in the last one, x squared minus 12x minus 28 equals 0, okay? Again, our a is 1, b is negative 12, c is negative 28. Make sure they're in that descending order before you plug it in. Let me write that quadratic formula for you here again, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay? So now we plug it in. x equals, this would be positive 12 because it's the opposite of what was here, plus or minus the square root of 144. Oh, sorry. That was the 12 squared is 144. I just got excited. And then minus 4 times 1 times the negative 28 
all over 2 times 1. It won't always be 1 for A. We just have a lot of examples. We're trying to start off, you know, a little easier for you. But it could be any number in front there. So just whatever's in front of the x squared. All right, simplifying inside. Um, negative 4 times negative 28 in there is going to give me 144 plus 112 all over 2. Um, that's going to be, I'm going to scoot this way just a little bit, square root. When I add those together, I think you get 256 all over 2. Simplify the square root. Believe it or not, that works out nicely. That's good for us. 12 plus or minus the square root of 16. Again, you could do that on your calculator. Just that part over 2. All right? So now, this is going to work out well for us. We're going to get some nice answers. So we're going to split it up. Um, think about what Ms. Graney did before and write it as two separate things. 12 plus 16 divided by 2. And it also equals 12 minus 16 all divided by 2. Add the numerator. 12 plus 16 is going to be 28 over 2. And we can reduce that to 14. And then 12 minus 16 is negative 4 over 2. And we can reduce that to negative 2. All right, so we got two nice answers there, some nice integer answers. These would be ones that if we graphed it, you could see exactly where it's passing through the x-axis on the calculator. It would be really easy to see and probably one you could have factored in the beginning. But this shows you that the quadratic formula works no matter what type of quadratic equation you have. Okay? So like you to try numbers two, three, and four on your own. Take a second, pause the video, and see if you can solve them. Just make sure everything's on the same side. So in number three, you're going to have to move something. And in number four, I would move this x squared so that it's over here and it's positive. All right? Give those a try. All right, let's see how you did. So the first one that you had to do was number two. And if you notice, when you clean it all up, the value under the radical actually becomes zero, which means when we solve, we only get one root. Here's what that would look like on a graph. Okay, over here at negative 11, the parabola would just hit negative 11 on the x-axis and bounce off. That's called a double root. Okay, so double root. That'll come into play later on, but just something to think about, a double root. So x equals negative 11 for number 2. And then we have 3 and 4 here. For number 3, notice that we got the square root of, negative, uh, the square root of 28 under our radical. We have to break that down with the largest perfect square that divides into 28. And once we did that, we had 6, 2, and 2 in each of our terms. So we were able to reduce by 2, so we get 3 plus or minus square root of 7. Number 4, we clean it all up, we move things over, we put it into the quadratic formula, and you'll notice that we get negative 16 under the radical. Again, that's going to indicate that we're going to have an imaginary root. So as Mrs. O'Rourke showed you before, this one would also cross the y-axis at 13. And if we graphed it, it would look something like this, where it doesn't actually intersect the x-axis. We say that we have imaginary roots. And when it's simplified, it's 3 plus or minus 2i. So if you made any mistakes, go back, look at them, see where you went wrong. And what we're going to have you do for an assignment, we're going to skip this, skip this, and we're going to go to page 27 in your packet. And we want you to do 13 to 24 all. And we want you to do it on a separate sheet of paper and submit it. Okay, so take your time. Make sure you use quadratic formula or factoring. You might be able to factor some of them, but make sure you get everything on the same side before you make that decision. Okay, get them in order, decide what method you want to use, but make sure you show us all your work. Have a great day, everybody. Bye. Bye.